What's going on, my fellow A plusers? Welcome back once again to a brand new video. It is I, your more phenomenal host, Adam Perez, and it's time for some Ultraman trigger, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to get into episode number eight. Brand new episode just dropped this past Friday. So if you guys have had the opportunity to check it out, thank you very much for certainly joining us. If not, please do yourselves a favor and certainly go ahead and knock out episode number eight as we're going to be getting into this week's episode. I'm actually still quite on a high from the previous episode, honestly, our crossover episode, getting the opportunity to see that it was, in fact, two parts, if you will, or at least the idea that Haruki, Mr. Ultraman Z himself, decided to go ahead and stick around for yet another episode. I was a big fan of it. I enjoyed just the um, uh, partnership the 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 buddy isms that kind of came out of uh, both of these Ultramen getting the opportunity to meet each other for the first time last week. And that enthusiasm just simply continues in this week's episode. I mean, I continue to love their partnership. There is something that we talked about last week about the idea of having Kango having the opportunity to have another Ultraman next to him, right? I mean, you want to talk about finally having somebody that is super relatable and can understand the things that you're going through. This episode was a perfect example of that, like just getting to see how happy Kengo was to be able to know that the things that he's experienced as Ultraman, so as Haruki, right? Um, the idea of how do you use your um, your 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 blaster beams, right? Um, how do you feel when the red dot on your chest starts blinking, which is something that I've always been wanting to know since this series started. Like when his chest does go red, does it mean that he's like low on energy? Is he having a heart attack? Like what is it, what's happening with the guy? So the fact that Ultraman Z can relate to that. Them talking about their excitement when it comes to flying. I love the fact that Haruki really emphasizes the idea of you got to use your spirit for like everything that you do, right? Like you can't be nonchalant when it comes to throwing punches. Like you got to give it your all when you're screaming out your techniques, whatever the case may be. But I just I just had a blast of seeing those two just feeding off of each other. Um, the, the back and forth between those two. Poor Akito just kind of in the middle of things right i'm um, being very reluctant to want to be referred to as kengo's partner uh even though they clearly are partners and clearly have formed some sort of bond it's really almost like akito just doesn't want to let people in on his secret that he actually does have you know a, a, a kind heart when it comes to people right like he, he just has a very reluctant way of showing that he certainly cares and that's the one thing that i love about the partnership between akito and kengo is that like if their personalities couldn't have been more opposite of one another it, it, it is fantastic to kind of see what they've uh, wind up um, getting themselves into but i continue to love the pushback that akito winds up giving him not accepting him uh as a as a good teammate or a good partner sort of thing but um i really enjoyed it man i really enjoyed it. like i'm probably going to be a little bit upset that Haruki is not going to be here next week um, because I am kind of curious to see what that's going to do for Kengo's mentality, right? Like, is he going to, not to say that he was like a worry wart or somebody that's sulking, but the idea that you at least have the opportunity to speak with another Ultraman, like, I do want to know, like, if, if this is going to catapult him into, like, a whole new level of heroism, right? Maybe having learned something from his uh, predecessor, um, something that he can now go into battles with, feeling a little bit more more confident in himself, you know, what he's capable of doing as an Ultraman. I, I do want to see if there's ramifications of the impact that Haruki actually wind up having on Kengo going further. So I will be interested. But that is one, like, really enjoyable aspect of this week's episode that I don't know if is necessarily going to carry over to next week's episode. But uh, I, I certainly enjoyed it and all the enthusiasm that it actually wound up bringing in here. Um, I do want to talk briefly about the alien here this week in Dada, um, an alien race with a ton of history I've come to find out throughout the Ultraman franchise. I honestly thought that this guy was just sort of a one-off when I actually watched the episode, but going back, referencing his name, trying to see if there's any history, there's plenty of history. It almost feels like this, uh, this Dada alien race kind of pops up in almost every Ultraman series, it feels like. Uh, I very I, When I think of that, though, for some reason, if you're a big Doctor Who fan, I think of of like Cybermen and the and uh, the Daleks and stuff, right? Like that one race that continue, that alien race that continues to pop up. That's just almost like a figure in every uh, in in a, maybe a sci-fi franchise or whatever the case may be. That's kind of what Dada reminds me of here. Granted, this is my first Ultraman franchise, but just getting to see the lineage of of the Dada alien race and like just its impact that it's had in other um, Ultraman franchises, I think really does go a long way. Creepy ass design. Uh, 
um, really creepy to just kind of see it digitize itself in the middle of the Nurse Desi attacking certain people, trying to even attack Akito in this episode for sure clearly has come to earth to sort of erase and control technology. I mean, talk about an, an absolutely amazing um, uh, battle plan, kind of forcing everyone to do things more analog instead of the current way that we do things now with digital, kind of really taking them back to the stone ages, if you will. The idea of them having to kind of shut down all their controls before this data in their system winds up overtaking everything. I mean, it literally tries to use the Nurse Desi's nurse cannon to kind of rain destruction and things like that on the city. So um, very um, dire situation for Gut Select to certainly be in. And honestly, probably for the world too, right? I mean, the idea that everybody's phone gets sort of um, hacked, um, destroyed, data erased sort of thing. I mean, it does make one wonder, especially in just the time and climate that we're in these days where everything has become so digital. You know, what happens if someone literally wanted to drop a gigantic EMP uh, on the United States or something like that, right? And just completely take out all forms of technology and electricity. Um, that's kind of what this reminded me of in a sense, like really having to stop this virus or this this hack from actually completely sort of taking over and leaving everybody else just pretty much helpless, right? Not being able to call anybody, not being able to control anything. That's pretty terrifying. Like that's a pretty terrifying notion. So to be able to see the gut select team continuing to come together which i gotta say like i i feel like gut select is the mvp of this particular season don't get me wrong kango's doing great work loving the ultraman trigger stuff great side characters great giants of of darkness but if you want to talk about an mvp the sixth man off the bench that comes off and helps you out through the thick and thin this gut select team is as 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 good as it gets, being able to kind of see them all work together with their teamwork, right? Um, knowing what exactly to do, them splitting up into their own um, work patterns. Like literally the captain's not even yelling at people to get things to do because they know exactly what they need to do by the end of this episode. And they do a, a remarkable job in trying to at least keep the Nurse Desi not only up in the sky, but also its control with the, with with them also so really love just the franticness that this data alien wind up bringing in here and it is one of those things that i think again just based off of where we're at techno technologically wise in this climate the idea of something coming to take over very dire and extremely dangerous so i absolutely loved uh what we wind up getting here from the guts team and, and if anything getting to see dada go from the nurse desi to the king joe if you ask me is almost an upgrade i mean the level of destruction that dada was able to reign while taking over the king joe robot monster in here was unbelievable i absolutely love just the the rockets that shoot out of its chest and then like just completely split up and go in completely different directions to just rain fire and destruction on the city king joe really impressed me especially some of the action pieces we got the great lighting and cinematography like having this dude this robot literally form itself and you just have like the spotlight coming through its back along with all the the smoke and everything it just really made for a great tone in regards to um uh king joe about to run rampant on the, on this world but if there is a complaint that i had the only issue that i had with this episode while I love the action and it looked incredibly great on screen, the multiple long henshin sequences or transformation scenes way too long in here, way too long in here. Like, they, listen, I enjoyed it in the first episode, getting an opportunity to see Haruki utilizing the sparkler lens or whatever to go ahead and transform an Ultraman Z. It was great to kind of see a different Ultraman utilizing a transformation of our current one in here. But anytime they have to go ahead and switch modes and stuff, the fact that Haruki was on screen like four or five times transforming, the first time is cool. Second time, not so, you know, it's okay. But by the third time, I'm just thinking to myself, this is just valuable screen time that we could be utilizing for other characters, storyline moments and things like that. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a long morphine sequence when it comes to um, Super Sentai. The morphine, the roll call, yada, yada, yada. But to abrupt that action in the middle constantly uh, of Ultraman Z and Trigger having to transform into their next form sort of thing, it's this is really where I wish they had implemented more flash morphs or flash transformations, if that's even a thing in, in Ultraman from time to time. Um, especially when you have two Ultraman that have to do several different configurations to go ahead and take, take down King Joe, which is 
a testament to how powerful that creature alone certainly is or that robot certainly is and if he's i'm assuming he's in ultraman z i'm assuming he's been that the robot's been utilized in that series if he if he has i am kind of curious to know how he was utilized in that season if if you if you appreciated king joe then but this is my first time experiencing what king joe can do and my god this thing is dangerous, absolutely dangerous. The fact that it takes two Ultramen to certainly take it down. Love the action, but again, my only issue with this episode was the extremely long multiple henshin sequences that we wind up having. I just didn't think we needed all of them for that, for that matter. Uh, and last but not least, my, my third main topic I definitely wanna talk about is Yuna. At this point, Yuna deserves to know what's going on with her, am I right? Um, we do see that she is very unsure as to what's happening to her, but she knows something is off, and she's known something has certainly been off for quite some time. Um, she's clearly now just picking up on it, though, or is like getting to the point of frustration where she needs some damn answers. Um, we've seen it build up through the season so far, uh, and this was sort of the final straw. Um, the idea of seeing Yuzari awaken to go ahead and see Akito, uh, save Akito from the data that was about to like literally blast him out of this world uh, and Yuzari winds up blowing him away sort of thing so really great to see her coming through in the thick of things clearly not just coming out to protect herself but clearly to protect people that she cares enough about um, uh, and so Yuna has some questions so I am kind of curious if next week we're finally going to see her learning about what's happening to her like Akito feels look very much like he wanted to open his mouth and say something um, you know start teaching her about the ancient ruins on the wall that he certainly has there how she certainly plays into it who yazari is what her connection is to the giants of light and darkness sort of thing so i've been waiting for this moment to happen especially the moment because i feel like maybe two three episodes ago you know was even questioning what's sort of happening to her and nobody really gave her any answers and then she wind up bumping into one of the giants of darkness who was confronting her directly along well a couple of giants of darknesses actually um confronting her right trying to force yazari to kind of awaken um and so yeah yuna finally has uh, officially had it you know the idea of going unconscious and waiting Waking up, not knowing what happened, that'll do that to you. That'll make you ask some questions as to what's wrong with me sort of thing. So um, I, I am curious if next week will be where she finally gets some answers. But regardless, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Um, and I'm just glad that despite the idea that we had a crossover, that they're still making this a thing and not um, uh, and running the storyline uh, and haven't forgotten about Yuna whatsoever. So that was one of my biggest things was I was thinking to myself, are we going to see the Giants of Darkness? Is the idea of a crossover just really going to gonna like put a fork in the road of the main storyline and kind of veer off and do something else but the fact that now that we've gotten the crossover out of the way we are going back to the yuna and yuzari stuff it's a, it's a storyline that clearly hasn't been forgotten uh and i can appreciate that uh, appreciate them for that if there is any honorable mentions this week it's probably just ignis being a fool uh the fact that we got ignis who just happens to just come onto the nurse desi whenever he wants to now i mean despite the fact that this man is a pirate and steals exquisite is a treasure uh gut select has officially yeah i don't they haven't officially made him a part of the team but homeboy literally just pops up whenever he wants to he's got that weird scalp scalp massager that he uses on uh merlu which i thought was pretty funny even uses it on the captain just subtly in the middle of all the chaos that's going on uh he clearly lost uh all his data when he was playing a video game on his phone which i hate mind you like talk about just um, a great homage to gamers out there that know the pain of getting an ultra rare item in a game and all of a sudden your game just crashing on you or you're not able to save it before before you die next time or whatever the case may be so i, I thought that was just great there was also another scene of of ignis at the very end when gut select is all together as a team and they're thanking everybody like ignis is on some scooter or something and he just goes by the screen in the background just super subtly like just the weirdest thing um ignis i mean ignis kind of helped them out in regards to at least getting all the technology together that they needed to keep the data out of its systems but you want to talk about just um the the humor aspect this week definitely came through him with that scalp massage massager trying to ease ease the stresses of merlu and the captain this week i thought it was uh actually pretty funny but um guys overall solid episode enjoyable one again i thought the action was spectacular again as much as the multiple long uh henshin sequences drove me crazy i love getting the opportunity to see both these ultraman together once again 
fighting evil Ultraman, unfortunately, Ultraman Z, unfortunately, going back home at the end of this episode. But again, I, I think the Haruki and Kengo relationship really did do great things, not only for this series, but I'm really hoping just for Kengo's mentality, certainly going forward when it comes to being Ultraman Trigger. So we'll see how the remainder of the season goes. But uh, another solid and rather enjoyable one, guys. If you guys are not watching Ultraman Trigger and this is your first time joining us, do us a favor. Go ahead and check out these episodes. You can certainly find them on the Ultraman YouTube page. It might be the Subaraya Productions uh, official YouTube page, but just type in Ultraman Trigger in the search bar and you'll definitely find these episodes with ease. But um, guys, I want to know your thoughts. At the end of the day, these are just simply my A-plus opinions, but I want to know yours. What did you guys think about episode eight for Ultraman? Let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below after this particular video airs. Uh, but until then, guys, we'll certainly see you guys next week for a brand new episode. But until then, do me a big favor. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And as always, keep it A+. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.